Our next question sent to cornydrivethrough at gmail.com from Austin. Jim, what do you think AJ Styles' legacy will be when he retires? Well, that was short and to the point. Um, God, that was out of the blue. Um, I mean, AJ's been a great talent. He's very, uh, over a long period of time, he's been very consistent because he was so athletic. Um, his early years, the promos were not earth shattering, but I've heard him of late speak with more confidence. He's had a great career. He's, he spent a lot of it in TNA where honestly, there was a ceiling where anybody was only going to go so far, but in Japan and I think it's great he didn't go straight from TNA to the WWE or it probably wouldn't have worked out well and that would have been mostly WWE's fault, but at least he was able to go to Japan, get over somewhere else and not be coming in fresh as a TNA guy that they might not have, you know, wanted to treat so well. But God, I don't I don't necessarily know what his legacy is. I'm not, is he ready to be written off or are we are we putting a, the period on the end of the sentence of his career already? How old is AJ? I always think everybody's young. I think he's around my age, 41. Yeah, so, you know, he's he's got a ways left to go. You're not too broken down yet. No, I'm good. Omax. Yeah. Omax, there you go, and Athletic Greens. That's right. So I don't know what, it, maybe his legacy is yet to be written. That was that, was, that sounded like a Stephanie McMahon answer, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, it did. I guess part of the issue, if I'm just going to assume here, is that he's had a pretty good run in WWE. He had a great run in New Japan. While he was used, for the most part, well in TNA, it was TNA. So how do you yeah. judge that portion of his career, which was the majority of his career? Well, you judge it as he was a... I mean, the WWE wasn't going to use him properly unless he had been to those other places and also waited for the right time. Because if he had gone to the WWE when he went to TNA, he'd have been on whatever their equivalent of 205 Live was at that point in time. They weren't ready yet. But after the Daniel Bryans and the other guys that, you know, made it a little more acceptable, I think it was easier for for them to, for whoever was his backer or champion or proponent in WWE to sell to Vince, hey, I know he's only five foot seven, but look at him. He's phenomenal. So, I, you know, it wasn't his fault. And there was no place else for him to be and make guaranteed money. He was making, you know, money in TNA, even if he wasn't drawing any, but that wasn't his fault because nobody else was either. So I think he was better off to stay there where they would use him on top. People could see how good he was. He'd make a decent amount of money and wait for the time when the WWE caught up to the idea of using a guy that can perform well, even if he's not that big. All right. That was a bit of a non-answer. Let's get another question I don't know here. what else to say. This next question. He, he's not fucking gorgeous, George. He didn't revolutionize the whole business, and he's not a schlub, so I can't knock him. And where else was he supposed to fucking go? Somewhere else on this great big flat earth. Somewhere else on this great big flat earth. 